guys, it's Alex with BF Vintage. We are here at yet another Goodwill uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona. I got my partner in crime, Miss Lisa, with me. And we're gonna see if we can find anything for reselling in my Etsy shop, BF Treasures Co. So here we go. Here we are. Get some goodies. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we noticed was this really cute little raccoon. He was made in the 1970s, um, and he was in pretty good condition. I just wasn't quite sure, um, you know, if people would be interested in him. And so we ended up running some comps just to see, um, you know, if there were any solds. And unfortunately, there really hadn't been. Um, so we ended up putting him back. And then I found this luster ware, um, it looked like a teapot with a cup, um, attached on the top. And I thought it was amazing. Uh, it did say hand painted made in Japan on the bottom, if I remember right. And, um, I was inspecting it cause it just, I couldn't believe it was there. Um, now, I ended up putting it in my cart, but then I actually ended up putting it back because it had a crack. You guys may have caught it earlier in the video, um, but yeah, it took me a minute. I just kept having to reinspect it, <laughs> but I caught it in the end. So, yep, yeah, right there towards the spout, um, you can see like a, a black line that looks like a crack. Then I saw these bunnies. I thought they were darling. Um, you know, Easter's just around the corner. It did, it looks like a hobbyist piece. It was signed and it had, um, I believe it was said 1968 on the bottom. I like the, the eyes. He's, he's just blinged out, you know, <laughs> and I figure if I don't sell him, I might just keep him as decor, uh, for my daughter because she likes bright and shiny things. So, and then I saw this Chokin, uh, music box and I actually hadn't seen a music box before. Um, so I was trying to, I was attempting to get it to play, but it, it really wasn't playing. Um, I was struggling with it for a while, trying to turn it, uh, the rest of it was in really good condition. You know, there was no cracks in the look, uh, lacquered wood, but had to move on cause it didn't work. And then we saw this little guy. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. He's a darling little seal. Now we were trying to research him, uh, and I believe there's another, um, seal like this that's made by Copenhagen. So we're a little bit confused and we're still researching it, but he was just too cute to leave behind. And I like the simplicity of, you know, the painting on his face and that he's, you know, this white, um, glazed little guy. So he went in the cart with his buddy, the bunny. They're, they're, they're friends now. <laughs> checked out this art glass fish and after inspecting it further I just felt like it felt a little bit lightweight and I just didn't feel like it was as high quality as I tend to go for so I did end up leaving that one behind but it was a pretty cool color I, li I like the blues and the clear um, and it was in good condition too and then I saw this. I thought, whoa, is that ivory? Now, I don't think it's ivory. Um, from what I read, ivory feels cold to the touch. And although it feels slightly cold, it doesn't feel like really cold. So I'm going to guess it's not. And I wouldn't, I don't think I'd want it to be anyways. But anyways, um, yeah, look at the detail on that, guys. I mean, it, it is made of resin, I believe, but so, so, so much detail and I think it's a ship of some kind and there's a bunch of people inside of it. I am definitely going to have to research this one, but my gut just said, you know what, this is unique. It's intricate. Someone t spent a lot of time on that, creating that somewhere. So it went in the cart to be researched later. Saw this plate, thought it was really, really beautiful, but it didn't have any markings on it. No. So I wasn't really familiar with it without any markings had to had to put it back and then I found this and at first it was really lightweight and I thought oh no is this another one of those you know not so high quality ashtrays or tins I don't know but 
I inspected it. It was in really good condition. And then it had a Made in Hong Kong sticker on the bottom. So I thought maybe I was wrong last time when I passed up something like this because I just thought it was too modern. Um, but I think this one actually is vintage. So I decided to go ahead and put it in the cart. You know, it was uh, a good price. And then I saw this and I, I thought, oh my gosh, is this a German figurine? Wow. And then it had a broken arm. I was like, no, how can she dance without her other arm? <laughs> oh man. So anyways, she got left behind as well. Ooh, and then I got really excited because I thought, oh, is this a Lefton figurine? She's so kitschy and darling, and she looks like she's in really good condition. Even the flowers look like they're in good condition. But then I was really disappointed because I looked at the price. Wait for it. Almost $20 for this figurine. That was really, really disappointing. Um, Obviously, I, I'm not going to buy that for the purposes of reselling because there's not going to be as much profit for me there. But we move on. And I found this hand-painted clock. Unfortunately, it didn't appear to be working. And I do believe there were some other pieces missing. So even though I appreciated the painting, I left that there as well. We always check the bags. You never know, guys. Check the bags. So I did find some brass and love me some brass had to show Lisa, um, noticed that one of them looked like it was copper. So that was interesting. But after I thought about it, I realized that I actually still have some of these in my Etsy shop right now. And so until those sell, I'm probably not going to pick up any more. So I just thought, you know what, I'll leave them for someone else in case somebody else is looking for some swans. So I moved on and I found these, um, it ended up being like a sake set. So it had the, you know, container for the sake to go in and also the little cups to go with it. But I just felt like, even though it was in really good condition, I thought maybe there'd be a lot like these. And so I didn't want to have to compete. Oh, this was exciting. I thought it was really cool. Uh, it did say it was made in Hong Kong and from Japan, and then there was all this damage. Did you guys see that? It was a repair that someone had made. Pretty good repair, but still, I, I'm just not a fan of that. And then I found another brass guy, and I was like, yay! Oh, no. Why? Why you do this to me? <laughs> and so I just um, was trying to put them back together, and then I gave up. <laughs> Next, I saw this... Well, you know, vase that looked like it was done in Art Deco style. I was trying to determine if it was modern. It did look modern, didn't have any crazing or aging to it. And um, something about the paint on the bottom threw me off. So even though I really liked it, I decided to um, leave it there because I just couldn't uh, confirm it that it was in fact vintage. So, but I really liked the color. That yellow was very bright. And then we found a Lennox box or serving dish of some kind that had a lid. And it is vintage Lennox because it has the Made in USA uh, stamp on the bottom. So something about it was just kind of throwing me off. I was like, okay, this is really gorgeous and it's vintage. What is it doing here? Like, <laughs> so I had to really inspect it, especially after the teapot that had a crack. So... We opened it up and I thought we were in the clear and then all of a sudden I saw a big chip on the inside where my finger is and uh, yeah. So that was a no-go. Decided to put that back. And then I saw this clear bud vase and I really liked it. It had etchings and it has mid-century uh, style to it so I just threw it in my cart. and didn't even have to think about it. <laughs> um, So then I was looking at the vases some more and I saw this face and I just really liked it. It had a made in Taiwan sticker on the bottom, but it just had too much damage around the rim. Um, you can see some of the paint was coming off. And so even though I really liked the style, the flowers were really pretty. Um, I just felt like the damage was too much. Oh, and then I was really excited about this guy because he had a, 
I think it was made in Italy, but then it looked like he had wings and they were missing. Oh man, this keeps happening to me today. <laughs> but we move on and we find this uh, Norman Rockwell tin and it was vintage, but I just didn't know if it was something people would be interested in. Um, and you know, I do tend to gravitate towards tins. They're very functional. People like them, you know, to use for various storage reasons, but I just felt like this one wasn't quite, um, just the subject matter wasn't quite what I think people would be interested in. So I decided to pass, moved on and found this vase or vase again. What am I doing? That's a bull, Alex, a bull. And it did say Japan on the bottom. Um, but when I was trying to, to look it up, I actually couldn't find anything like it. And I don't know if that was a good thing. Maybe I should have just gone with it. It did look a little bit like the rim looked a little bit off, um, like it had been handmade. So maybe that that's a regret for me. Maybe I should have just taken it and done more research. But then I saw this and I was like, oh, she's so cute. And it says made in occupied Japan. So she is definitely vintage. And, uh, you know, I noticed that she had a little bit of chippy chips on her fingers, but not too bad. And she had some ruffles that were chipped off, but otherwise like her foot was in good condition. Her head and face was in good condition. And given her age, you know, likely in the 1940s, I just felt like, and the price, I was going to, you know, go ahead and risk it, mom, because I thought she was interesting. And next we found another bowl uh, that is made in Japan, but it was really pretty. I loved the black color and the florals on there and the scalloped, you know, um, edges no chips or cracks, uh, hardly, not really any damage I could see that wouldn't just go away from cleaning. So it went in the cart. And then we saw this piece here. Um, Lisa gravitated towards it. Um, it's a Dorothy Thorne, Thorpe, sorry, Dorothy Thorpe piece, which I'm actually not familiar with, but she was. And she felt like this was going to be a good piece because it's in good condition uh, no chips just need some cleaning and the silver looked good on it it still had the little message in the, the bottle um, so this is me just putting back that bowl because I just was not sure about it and was second guessing myself so yeah ended up putting it back still have regrets but you know we just move on that's all we can do so then I was looking in the art section and I found this piece of brass and it, it drew me right away because it had like that green, uh, tarnish look to it. Uh, it said 1994 party light. And so it looks like a sconce that you'd put up on the wall and put a candle inside of it. Uh, I loved it cause I thought it'd be great for, for a nursery, uh, the, the crescent moon with the stars, it would just look darling in a nursery. So even though I wasn't as familiar, I did, I could obviously tell it was vintage because of the, the age, uh, listed on the, on the back. And so it went in the cart. Now, if you're wondering about that Disney plate, we were considering it, but we put it back because there were no other pieces that went with it in the store. And then I saw this guys, I don't know what it is with me and gold clutches. I seem to be drawn to them and they're drawn to me. Um, but this one was in really good condition, especially with all the beading. The only thing that looked new to me was the, the handle. Um, or yeah, the, the chain handle. Um, but it did say, oh, I want to say made in Japan. Yep. Made in Japan. And yeah, there was no staining on the inside. I loved the satin lining and I love that the, the beads were dangling at the bottom. I just thought it was stunning. And so it had to go in the cart, you know, it just had to. So there it goes. So this is what we got. We did pretty good, guys. I mean, check it out. I'm happy. <laughs> hey, 
Hey guys, so we did really well. Uh, for me, that's a good day. <laughs> uh, for me, that's a full cart. <laughs> um, and we spent about 45 bucks. Um, I think that my favorite thing was the gold vintage bag. Uh, it looked like it was all in really good condition. The only thing that looked a little bit new was the chain that looked like it had been added, but otherwise all of it was just stunning. I loved, loved the beadwork on that. And what was your favorite, Lisa? I love the gold purse also. Ooh. And I also really am interested in that Dorothy Thor face. So yeah. I've never seen her actual tag in anything. So yeah. I that was a cool find. That was cool. That was like a message in a bottle kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, it was. Literally. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give us a like. And if you want to see more, then please hit that subscribe button. Until next time. Bye.